Good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Eight hours! Woo! <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> 435 for eight hours. Unheard of. I have never seen fishing like that in my life. Ever. Today we will show you huge crab holes on deadliest catch. Sand fleas. They're eating the bait. Uh, ew, dude! First pot had some crap, second pot had sand fleas. So it was just a couple of fish, the bait was gone. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, there's something. There's life. What are those things? Tobias says it's a troll crab. Bring it up to me, I want to see that thing. Looks like a rock crab and a red crab and a blue crab all together. Monster Hall. Sig and Jake hit the jackpot on deadliest catch, pulling in a colossal load of crabs that amazed everyone. They sensed the need to relocate due to sparse crab sightings. Hello, Jake. Hey, Sig. How you doing? <laughs> Probably gonna have to flee the country here pretty soon if things keep going the way they're going. How about that? Same here. I picked him on a town soak, and there was nothing. And there should have been at least one crab for the string. It, it doesn't make any sense that I would go from 20s or low teens to just blank zero. Blank nothing. I just think with the full moon, it went off the bite. You never know. I want to set in the canyon where you already have just been. Let me take a look at this. Despite initial disappointments, they stayed optimistic. After analyzing the canyon's layout, they devised a new plan to catch migrating crabs. When you look at that canyon and you look at how it runs from the fjord and all the way out. Yeah, I do. The canyons run out into the flats, and that's supposedly the crab highway. And now that we're after that moon, uh, maybe it's time to give it another try. Sometimes those crab hunker down for a few days, and then bang, they're on the bite again. So. Well, how about this? Why don't you come in from the top, from the north, and set on the mouth of that canyon, and we'll come in from the backside on the bottom, and we can kind of close it up in the middle. Tension mounted as they approached their gear, facing empty pots and a looming deadline. But their luck turned around as they hauled up pots filled with king crabs, sparking excitement. The tides have slacked off. We're hoping that something could be in here somewhere. There's a lot on the line here. We've only got a few days before this order is due. And so far, we've come up short. But uh, we're not giving up. We've got the first pots coming up. Here we go. I see a little bit of life. We got crab! We Nice, Clark. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got king crab. We got crab! How many? Eleven. That works. King crab! Another day in Norway. Another day in paradise. <laughs> yeah, we got crab. We got crab, honey! Well, this is the kind of fishing we've been looking for. Cha-ching! Woo! We got crab! You got a good one? <laughs> Cha-ching! There we go. Getting that money right now. No, we're seeing big numbers of king crab just consistently. Despite some setbacks, their persistence paid off with a whopping total of 7,097 crabs. With relief and gratitude, they celebrated their successful haul, knowing they had overcome the odds. There we go. Yeah! We got 
got some big boys in that one. 65. I'll take a 60 all day long. That works. <laughs> Huge crab haul. In icy waters, Jake and his crew found a massive haul of crabs. Initially unsure, they took a risk in new areas where crab sightings were rare. They were thrilled when their pots were full of crabs, but faced challenges due to time constraints and icy conditions. Oh! Oh! Look at that pot! Yeah. There's crab. Clean? Okay, I'm getting a count on it. I love that you have to count it. <laughs> you didn't have to count any pots we hauled. First pot looking, dude. Ninety-one. Nine-one. <laughs> Bro. One sixty. Joe says the best crowd we've seen so far. I'm hungry now. Oh, oh my God! Boo! Whoa! Whoa! Hey, Sean. Go for Sean. 350 in this one. Should I just set a string here, maybe? I'm looking at my ice program. I mean, this thing is throwing some conflicting views here, whether or not this thing's going to be ice covered, but. I haven't seen a single bitter piece of ice either. Dump them, dump them, dump them. It's hard to take chances, but nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Maybe I'm going to be the push that he needs to put those things in the water. Despite equipment problems and injuries, they kept going, eager to catch as many crabs as possible. Jake led them forward determined to succeed despite the dangers. Before the crane was taking a crash in this weather. The stanchions on the forward crane broke. I don't have time to weld them, which means that we have to chain down the pick and boom. It's so cold, mechanics fail. Bad things happen when you're near the ice. What the hell? Yo, is there a hydro leak? Yeah. Hydros are off. It's got a leak somewhere. I can guarantee you this one is ice related. And we can't stack because we have a broken launcher hose. You okay? Does it hurt? You all right? Nicky, Nicky, Nicky. Nick cut his hand. Oh my God. As things got worse, they chose safety over catching more crabs, moving to safer waters. Even though they left behind good crab spots, they knew it was safer. They decided it wasn't worth risking their safety. The okay, crane's good. I'm trying to push it as much as I can, but hurry the up. You gotta get the out of here. What are you doing? But I've got very little time. Awesome. I'm moving for real this time. To the west and away from the ice. I think I'm gonna go deep. I'll check in with you as we go along. Okie dokie. We'll be here. There's a lot of crab here, but I'm just done with the juju. I don't think me and Sean are willing to go play with the ice anymore. Crab hall in freezing temperature. The weather turned rough with currents crashing and waves hitting heights of 15 to 25 feet. Captain Keith hurriedly sailed towards the offload point, facing violent seas where northern currents clashed with southern winds. The weather is horrible today. The current is crashing into the wind and it's stacking these waves up to sharp, nasty 15 to 25 footers. The crew felt exhausted from the cold and heavy workload, pushing them to their limits in a race against time. Despite the challenging conditions, there was cautious optimism as they dropped the pots. Luckily, they found a significant amount of beautiful crab, boosting morale. The guys are just worn out, man. The cold, the workload, and everything else. 
taking its toll on the crew. Keith is pushing us. Right now, it's a race against the clock. I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll see something here. Oh, yeah! There is good news. It's a big mountain of crab. Beautiful crab, too, man. That's exactly what you like to see. Money on the day, Looking pretty good so far. With each haul, they filled the tanks with over 10,000 crabs, working tirelessly until the very end. all the 600 crab in it. I'm not saying we're winning the race against the clock. All I know is that we're putting crab on the boat. This string's been really good, close to a 500 average. It's a good thing we're on good numbers because I don't know how many more days of this these guys can handle. We're gonna work them right to the bitter end. But tanks filling up. We'll definitely have over 10,000 crab in this string. And with the boots to that starboard forward tank, we will be done. Despite the hardships, they persevered, knowing they were making progress. Black Cod Hall, Captain Jake faced the challenge of using long lines for black cod fishing on the saga. With untested gear, he felt nervous but determined. Meanwhile, Captain Sean Dwyer adapted to his new ownership role. All right, I got three strings that are long line. It's so new to me, it just scares the living crap out of me. We'll see if we can pull it off. We don't even know if we can pull. Long line string, yeah. This is on tested gear. Gave up my pink slip to get black cod. It's hard not to feel a sense of panic and helplessness. Or else, see it start working for new owner, Captain Sean Dwyer. Jake cautiously dropped the first pot, hoping for a steady catch. To his surprise, he pulled up an impressive haul, exceeding expectations. Each pot brought in more black cod, earning Jake a significant profit. I'm hoping to get a steady 35 average plus on these strings. About to find out right now. Nice and easy. At 550 a pound, a good black cod pot fetches 2,000 bucks. Jake smashes that number with $5,000 right out of the gate. With determination and skill, Jake proved his ability to succeed in the new fishing method, securing a successful start to the operation. Come on, baby, come on. Woo! Yeah, that's the way to do it right there. <laughs> Woo! Crazy? 168 black cod. Bam! You're in the right area. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. Told you. New type of crab. Sig and his crew struggled with the dim lighting on their boat as they approached their first bag. Despite the challenge, they persisted, hoping to find signs of life. We're coming up on our first bag. It's kind of hard to find them on this boat. You know, the lighting's not exactly perfect right now, so everybody's trying to get it figured out here. You have two and a half shots on this pot. It's a deep one. You've got to be good. I'd love to see a crab an hour. I'd love to see just life. 
when they discovered big crabs in the pots. Excitement surged, boosting their morale. They learned from each catch, studying bait and crab presence to improve their haul. Despite setbacks, they remained determined to succeed. Come on, be something. I see legs. Yeah! Oh yeah, that's big boys! Ah! <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Norwegian Red King Crab. Yeah! They're monsters! This pot has two and a half shots. In my opinion, this was a good pot. Nothing? Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> there he is. Sand fleas. They're eating the bait. Ew, dude! First pot had some crap. Second pot had sand fleas. So it was just a couple of fish. The bait was gone. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, there's something. There's life. What are those things? Tobias says it's a troll crab. Bring it up to me. I want to see that thing. It looks like a rock crab and a red crab and a blue crab all together. Taking a break to regroup, they recognized the difficult challenges awaiting them in the crabbing industry. Looking back on their efforts, they realized the value of hard work. Sig thought about the possibilities of troll crab, seeing its abundance and market potential. Hey guys, come on in, take a break. Yeah, the first one we saw alive, and after that it was dead. Bang, she's gone. You know, at this pace, it would take a while to hit that million dollar mark, that's for sure. This is troll crab. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It is good. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. Is there a quote on this stuff? No. No quotas. Free fishing. So it's open access, the whole thing? Yeah. Really? Okay. Huh. Tastes like king. It's crab. good. It does. The price is low, but they are plentiful. Plenty of them. But I think I uh, make money, make a living with hard work. You got me, Manny? I need you to find everything you can about troll crab. There might be a chance here for something bigger. Plan to catch troll crab. Jake and his crew were thrilled to discover legs wriggling in the pots, a promising indication of a bountiful catch awaiting them. However, confronted with strong currents, Sig required heavier pots to fish efficiently. Sig reached out to Jake for assistance, requesting spare pots. I see legs! I see legs! Oh yeah! Woo! Big one. Big one. Yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bait him up, yeah. Set him back. Is that Sig? Skull boss, Ferguson. I thought that was you. What are you doing? Listen, Jake, we're in some uh, heavy currents, and uh, the only way to fish in those currents is with that those heavy pots you got. So, if you got spare pots, we need them, okay? They got them all welded together as condo pots. I need the gear, so you're gonna have to give up a few pots, okay? I'll wait. Despite initial hesitation, Jake agreed, understanding the urgency. Meanwhile, Mandy sought processing solutions for troll crab, enlisting Magnus's expertise. Magnus, an experienced fisherman, agreed to help. Frederick also offered support with crab processing. Hey, I'm Magnus. Hello, hello. Oh, take the short, eh? Hello, take the short. He was the floor manager at a cannery. If anybody can help, He's the one. Thank you so much for helping me with this. It's been well, really hard finding someone that can process our troll crab. I'll try to, yeah. try to help you. I can't promise anything, but we can try and see what he says. Hello, Frederick. Hey. Mm -hmm. This is Mandy Hansen. Hey, son. Hi. Nice I to meet you. I <laughs> hope you can help him. I have a delivery coming up. I was hoping you could help me process our troll crab. Uh, what kind of quantity are you uh, talking about? Well, we recently made a delivery for 200 kilos, but we are looking to scale up to about 2,000. I know it's not really big, 
we, we can't afford that because uh, we don't have the equipment for it. So uh, uh, when you scale up, maybe we can do something that then. Well, what if we do a live order? Can I use these ones? How, how many are you thinking of? I only have to deliver to about 12 restaurants. Sure. Okay, if I load them up? Yeah, no problem. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. I really appreciate your help. Yeah. Adapting to the challenging conditions, the crew carefully deployed the pots using a pelican hook for safety. Despite obstacles, they maintained hope for a successful troll crabbing venture. Oscar! Yeah? You got a pelican hook? Yeah, so we I can got tie a hook. Yeah, I got a pelican hook. Let's try that instead of cutting it. Let's, uh, let's go. Let's try. So instead of cutting the line, they're going to just pull on the line, pot will go in the water. This would be a good one. Set it. Set it. Ready? Yeah. Very nice. Much safer. See, when you have the pelican hook, we can swing it out further. Before, we had to keep it close to the rail because you had to be able to reach it with a knife. Hopefully, we get a lot of troll crab in there. 435 crabs in one pot. Jake encountered a dangerous storm with strong winds and towering waves putting his boat at risk. With only 80 pots, safety was paramount as they navigated within a small area. Communicating with Lenny, Jake assured him of their safety. I'm the smallest boat in the fleet. And this storm's highly dangerous. Hey, Lenny. Jake, I think they might have down forecast the weather a little bit. Only got 80 pods. We are all safe at this moment. I'm just staying in this two and a half mile by three mile little box. I think we'll be okay. Determined to catch crab, Jake acknowledged his vessel's size, but remained confident in his abilities. Battling freezing spray and ice, Jake ventured into treacherous waters, hoping for a successful haul. Though my power may seem absolute, I still have winning. And I have a lot of crab to catch. I have just as much as the big boats. Here we go. Be safe, guys, okay? Roger that. Help me watch out for the waves if you can see them. Don't be afraid to run. No. Go down. Yeah. Go. Here we go. Let's go, Got here in the middle of a storm. Less people fish up here because it is nasty. Heavy freezing spray and ice. Their efforts paid off when they discovered an astonishing 435 crabs in a single pot. The amazing catch made Jake and his crew feel thrilled and excited. It was a big win in the rough Bering Sea. This string is the farthest northwest string that I have. I'm hoping it's maybe 200, 300. Praying to God it works. Here we go. Come on, baby. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> That's eight hours! for eight hours, unheard of. I have never seen fishing like that in my life, ever. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video with your family and friends. See you soon.